This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. You know, when people like reach out and ask for help and it's something as simple as, hey, shipping her a box of tampons. The one thing about this girl is she's never asked me for anything. She may have hinted about tampons. It is the 25th. Yeah, I had to double check. <laughs> Of January 2023, my name is Corey Winfield, and this is the 217 Recovery Podcast. Joining me on Discord once again, my friend, Adam Brothers. How you doing, bro? Hey, buddy. How is it going, man? Wait, what was that? I said, hey, buddy. How's it going, man? Oh, I thought you said something else. What do you think I said? Hey, buddy. How is this, this is it going? No, it may be because of the my Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's what it is. My what? Yeah, because you were coming through kind of bubbly to me a little bit. That's just my voice, bro. Uh, That's how I sound on a Wednesday night, a little bubbly. So you are doing exciting things with your podcast. It seems like every time we check in with you, you, you've done a little something more. You're getting a little something more. And today, yeah, I'm, yesterday, I'm trying to get ahead. Yesterday, you you messaged me and you called me and said that you got a website. I did. StoneSoupRecoveryPodcast.com. Damn, bro. Right? Now you're big time in it for show. And I got my page up. I think it's looking sharp. Yeah. So remember, StoneSoupRecoveryPodcast.com. There you go. And then you got to put pictures up there. Right. We're working on some good photos. Sean's actually a photographer. Oh, so she's yeah, so she's going to take us some really good photos, and I'm going to upload them, and I'm try to make it look as nice and sleek as I can. Hell yeah. I love social yeah. media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got your social media links on there. I do. Pastor Deb I loves do. social media. All right. Pastor Deb, we love her. Yeah, that was a great podcast, wasn't it? It was. It was. I like. I really enjoyed listening to her, and I've listened to her since as well. Yeah, she's she's real she is too you know she's very funny and that was that was a great podcast that was one of my favorites i think i agree i should i'll podcast. pass her info along and i'm sure if you hit her up on facebook she'd be like heck yeah i'll do a podcast nah, that'd be awesome mm -hmm. I never run. like i heard you on Corey's. you gotta be on mine i gotta i gotta stay up with them yeah no yeah. when you have a good guest like that or you hear a good guest man go get them yeah but she yeah, definitely stay up. that's what i'm saying i gotta stay on top of it yeah, she definitely was a good one. It's hard sometimes getting guests and booking people. And Yeah, I found like, um, and I didn't expect this going into it. Mm -hmm. I found like people um, are scared of the microphone. And That's... it's kind of weird, like, because um, I've invited a few people and a couple of them have actually come to the house and, and sat down and then was like, nope. But... I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel forced, but okay. And then I asked them why, and they just, they weren't ready. Again, like what you and I had talked about in the past about how there has to be an honesty with the microphone. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of afraid of that. And uh, I was like, okay, all right. But yeah, that was really, I, I, I didn't expect to ever run into anything like that. Yeah, sometimes people will be nervous, but then I'll just jump right in with, have you ever bought anybody tampons? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of messes them up, and then you just keep going with it. But have you, Adam, ever bought anybody tampons besides your lady friend? I had to buy them for my daughter once. Oh, awkward. Awkward, super awkward. Yeah. One time, so, I had to buy them from, for a shipped customer. I was doing shipped to avoid real work. Oh, yeah. And so I go to Meyer, and the kind this lady wants is like, I can't remember, but it was, I don't know, super deluxe or something. And I go to Meyer, and they're like, well, it says we have them. It says we have one box left. I'm like, well, where is it? Right. And then I had to get down on my hands and knees, and I look, and there it is, like shoved <laughs> under the rack. And I'm like, how, the fuck, how does that get there? So I have the guy get a broom, and we get it out. And I was like, yeah got my tampon yeah but it was it was awkward and i kept going it's for a shipped order <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like okay weirdo <laughs> but it it, it, it was 
was the situation. But when I was talking about there with Dustin in the open, uh, Dustin used to live at the sober living house that I managed. You remember Dustin, maybe? Um, yeah, I do. Captain Savaho, we made a, yeah. a cape for him because yeah. he was having a hard time even paying the living expense, you know, for the rent. So what they call it living expense. So that means they can kick you out whenever they want. Whenever they want. Bye, Felicia. Get out. Using drugs, out. Out. You don't stay here. You're a guest. <laughs> and you now you're gone. You got to go. So Dustin, like I said, was having a hard time. And he comes to me and was like, hey, can I borrow some money? No. <laughs> That's one of the rules most of the, in most sober living homes is you don't lend money out to people. That's right. I said, no. It's like, man, this girl hit me up and she's having a hard time. She just needs some tampons. I was going to ship her some. That's like, funny. How are you going to ship her some tampons when A, you don't have the money to buy the tampons and B, you don't have the money to ship the tampons? That's hilarious. Well, that's what I was asking you for. Hmm. Hold on a minute. I got an idea. I was like, since you're playing Captain save we're going to go ahead and make you a cape. So Perfect. We go to the store. We buy this orange, like, I think it might have been just fabric. And we had it cut. And then we go home, and I get on the Cricut machine, and I make Captain save like, press on, iron on, heat press deal and we weed it we print it out we weed it put it on phew, heat press it and on the back it said <laughs> captain save a hoe and then i had like a picture of like a mailman or something and it's like saving hoes since 1976 that's awesome and we couldn't get the clips right on the front so i think we just used like a bobby pin or something a big ass bobby pin right but then we put the cape on him and then we went back to walmart and petoskey and made him put the cape on and walk through the store to get the tampons. And then when he checked out, we paid for them. Uh -huh. And it was a very classic story. People were like, what in the hell is going on? And of course, Tyrone was with us. So the, the funniest part of it all, I didn't even c catch on video. Like I got a little video of Dustin like walking in and, you know, some pictures of the cape. Mm -hmm. But when Tyrone walked in, the greeter lady was this older when I say older, I mean like 78, real short lady. And she just looked at Dustin like, what the hell? And we're all kind of laughing and chuckling. And she's like, what's going on? And Tyrone walks up to her and he's like, that's Captain save a <laughs> And she's like, what? Captain, Captain save a hole? And he said, no, it's Captain save a hoe. You know, H O E. Ho, like a lady uh, of the night. And I'm and Chris Goss and I, we fell out just dying laughing. I would have too, man. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. And this lady's face was like, oh, oh. And then Tyrone's just shaking his head yes. And he points at Dustin. He's like, he saves them hoes. <laughs> and he just goes walking away. And oh, my God, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like, it was Hell so yeah. comical. I love Tyrone, man. He's he was he's a trip, man. He's a trip. <laughs> that that was funny though but that's where the tampon thing came into play with that open but yeah it was it was quite interesting we used to have a lot of fun in recovery i was telling the guys last night when i was talking at the recovery center here in traverse city about the fun and the crazy things we would do and some people at aa meetings in Boyne city they wouldn't like to see us come because they figured we'd be playing some kind of game and they could never pick up on it because we'd work it into real stories. Mm -hmm. We'd give each other things to say and we had to work it into a real story. You know, we couldn't just be like, oh, I was flying airplanes yesterday. And like you had, had to be a real thing, which if you think about it is a great idea because it makes you focus less on being afraid to say what's really on your mind. Cause you're worried about saying this crazy absurd thing that we just told you that you have to work in. Mm hmm. So getting it out about how your dad left when you were a child and, you know, that you really have abandonment issues, it's, it's easy to get off your chest when you got to work in, and I wore my mom's dress and I liked it. That's funny. <laughs> you know, or, That's funny. you know, the silly things like that, that you have to work in it. It just, I'm more focused on that than I am about getting that stuff off my chest. And they say the more you talk about things, 
the easier it is to keep talking about it. You know, it is and, true. And your brain will mark it down as talked about. So your mind lives and learns through repetition. Yeah. It so does. those people, those meetings, you just, however they feel, they should talk to their therapist about it. You know, that's how I kind of looked at it. If they think we're in there playing games and having fun, making mockery of this. Oh, they should talk to somebody about it. And it would, like I said, would piss them off because they, they couldn't really tell what we were saying and what was real and what was not. <laughs> Sometimes we wouldn't play and they'd be like, mm-hmm, some guys playing them stupid games again. And we're like, we didn't even play it today. Like Chris right. is just that effed up. <laughs> like, yeah, that's their like thing. Chris. Yeah, bring Chris with you. It's, but it, it's, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, it's funny that you brought up, um, like somebody with abandonment issues. Not that I necessarily have abandonment issues, but I've been reaching out trying to find my dad. Oh. Yeah. How's that going? Well, so far I've got dead ends, but I think I know where he lives. I just don't have a phone number. And uh, he's 73. Mm. So I haven't seen him in about, oh, I don't know. 15 years probably and this is the only time i've seen him really since i was 10 hmm. but so i'm i'm prepared for what he has to say one way or the other i just feel like i should reach out to him one last time and and uh see what he has to say to me now that i'm in recovery and i'm sober i could have never done this drinking i wouldn't even have thought about it there was too much shame involved yeah, and he's and now I don't I don't feel that way today. My my shame is I'm I feel empowered by my recovery. And, and so should, I I'm I'm gonna push forward. You should. So it's not a matter of finding out who your dad is, it's just finding out where your dad's at. Correct. Okay. I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I know who he is. I know who my daddy is. <laughs> it's just that we've had this a strange relationship and he's been sober he he was a, he's a recovering alcoholic he's uh been sober like 30 some years oh wow and one of the last conversations we had i was i was drinking oh and um i called him on christmas right after it was this would have been like christmas 2013 and uh hey dad just wanted to wish you a merry christmas he said, "Don't call me anymore. I don't want anything to do with you." He said, "He said you're you're not a good person," and he hung up the phone on me. Hmm. That was Christmas. So, uh, I don't know. Things have changed, and I've changed, and I don't know. I just feel like I need to reach back out to him one more last time. And if he tells me to go to hell, he tells me to go to hell. You know, at least this time when he tells me to go to hell, I won't go and get drunk over it. Right. He'll say, well, you're lost, buddy. Yeah. You know, exactly. You know, like I said, my, there was a point in my active addiction where I felt so much shame and guilt over my drinking and then trying to talk to my dad and, and, um, just feeling like I was just nothing but a drunk. No good, never going to be any good. And uh, it, that that kept me down, and it's through recovery that that I found the strength to do these things that I've never thought or seen myself able to do before. So, what was once a, a blight and a stigma in my life for myself has now turned into power, and I want to use that power now. And if one of those things is reaching out and getting told to go to hell by my dad, then that's what I'm going to do. But I'm sure as hell going to try. Yeah, at least you'll feel better at the end of the day knowing that you did try. And you can't control what other people do. Can't. And it's the next right thing to do, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always talking about the next right thing. And I'll take the high road and do the next right thing. That's a good one. Good way to look at it, and it's good for your soul because, like I said, if something happens, he passes away, and you're going to be thinking, man, I wish I just would have reached out one more time because, you know, yeah. it might have been different. 
maybe he was meaning the drunk me was was somebody that wasn't a good person and maybe he meant don't call him when i'm drunk you know you never know what someone else right. is thinking or, or what they meant but you you know and to just go well i'll never know because i never was man enough to reach back out to him and yeah you can reach out to him and if he says go to hell hey <laughs> You did what you needed to do. And now you can close the book and move on. But I doubt he'll say that. And, and maybe he will. Who knows? But at least you're prepared to, to handle that now. Like you said, you're not going to go drink over it. That's right. It might hurt your feelings, but at the end of the day, you did what you thought was the right thing by reaching out. So, yeah, That's exactly it, too. I wouldn't be able to. And that's what kept me thinking, like, He's like getting up there, and if something happens, and, and I don't take my shot to say, you know, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm your son, and I'm over here. Um, if I don't take that shot, man, I'll always regret it. You know. Okay. Yeah. Just keep me posted. Oh, and, yeah. Pastor Deb wants you to keep it posted. So. <laughs> All right, Pastor Deb. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. A drop. I know what drop. You get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love drops. And you're going to have your new board coming in, I don't know, eventually. Yeah. And you'll be I'll, able to... I'll have it I'll have it soon, probably in about 6 weeks. Okay. Well, you got to have me on your show so that way you can record me and make drops. You're going to be my first. <laughs> and then I'll just keep saying stuff over and over and just keep playing it and I'll sound stupid. Uh, it's amazing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> get it. We we understand. We get it. Uh, she's there were so many drops from that interview and I only pulled three of them but man there was tons of them in there and she's just like I said a trip and I hope you really do have her on that, yeah that would be amazing I would love to have her on I'll uh, of course wait till I get the new board and stuff and uh, definitely have her on that would be I would I would enjoy that very much and it was announced kind of a couple weeks ago or maybe i don't know a couple days ago time was crazy for me right now but the ufam rally is going to be back in lansing on may 18th it's a question mark i'm pretty sure may 18th it's a thursday and it'd be cool if you did your show from there that would be cool so now you need a tent we have a tent you need some shirts we have shirts you have shirts already? Not to give away. Well, you don't need them to give shirts away. Shirts to wear. <laughs> like, <laughs> like your Stone Soup Recovery Podcast shirts? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. But, no, it. but none to give away. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Would, would love to make up some swag shirts, man. That'd be great. Okay. I'll tell you how we do it little discount and it's not as expensive as you think but it's not as cheap as you think either so that's kind of right weird that i just said that in the same sentence because it can get pricey and we give people anybody who signs up on our website 217 recovery.com or through the app the 217 recovery app we give everybody a shirt anybody who signs Where's up my shirt Corey winfield so i mean you got to sign up, Adam. I thought I did. Nope. If you signed up, you got a shirt. <laughs> well, I'm signing up after this podcast. <laughs> there you go. That's how I do it. See, you got one. <laughs> but, but I might wait to mail it to you because we're trying to save our funds right now. Because, you know, we had talked about it off air, but we got a couple grants, you know, and Marnie was really excited. And I was excited at first, too. And then we're like, oh, this is how they work. And. You need to have funds to use these grants. I mean, which, okay, I get it. But it's kind of frustrating when, you know, there's a lot of money out there that, you know, is supposed to be coming in and it's not. And you're just like, what the hell are we supposed to do? Like, how, how are we supposed to, you know, establish this, you know, community center when we can't spend the money, you know, because we don't have the money to spend. So it's kind of frustrating, but... We're going to figure it out, man. God's in our corner with this, and we have nothing but good intentions, and 
I think we can help a lot more people. And we just got to keep the faith, man. You will. You will overcome this. I know you will. Yeah. I can see. I mean, I just, you're such a champion at the things that you do, you and Marnie. The things that you do and you tackle, you and you really do, you accomplish them. And I know in my heart of hearts that you're going to find a way through this. I know it. I don't know how, I don't but either. I know that you will. I put in a call to my older brother who's an accountant. <laughs> I was like, hey, bro, would you call me, please? He was supposed to call me over the weekend and he didn't. Okay. But hopefully he does because he could probably give me some pointers on what to do, what not to do. But, yeah, it's just one of those things, man, that I call them doors in your way. You know, sometimes doors slam right in your face and you just got to figure out, hey, how do I get to the other side? How do I get through that, through that, to that room to get to the other room where I need to go? Where I know there's good things and giving up that it crossed my mind. Absolutely. F it. I quit. Ugh. But that's, that's not how I roll. But yeah, it did cross my mind. Drinking never did. So that's kind of cool. That is cool. But I know I'm not going to quit. We've come too far to stop. Now we have goals and dreams and, I so said, our, our hearts are in the right place. So I just figured, and I figured this whole time, you know, you know that I, I take people to and from treatment. You know, that's one of the things we do. And it's True. such a pivotal piece. And the guy I was riding with today, I had to get a guy from treatment and take him home. He's like, you know, how many people wouldn't get to or from treatment if you didn't give them rides? And I was like, I don't know. We've done like 275 of them or something. Yeah. He's like, that's a lot of people that wouldn't have gotten to or from treatment. I was like, I know. And I didn't tell him I haven't taken a paycheck yet. <laughs> yeah. I didn't tell him that part, but like, I just figured, you know what? God's going to take care of me one day. Like it'll all work out how it's supposed to just keep doing what I'm doing. And there were mornings I, I can still remember right out to Alpena, Michigan, which is across the other side of the state. And I remember one morning it was cold and I was just, and I was just praying to Jesus the whole time, you know, just talking to God and, just saying, I know you'll take care of me, Lord. Just please, <laughs> like, cut me some slack here and there on the way. And and he has more than I would like to probably, well, not more than I'd like to admit, but more than I can remember, I guess. All right. You know, so just, just sticking with it, man. And, you know, doing the podcast is still fun for me, so that's good. You know, sometimes it gets tedious. And maybe we'll just cut it back to once a week and just do like a super show. I don't know. I, I like doing it multiple times a week because, like I said, it's it's more of a therapy session for me I get to chat and especially to have buddies like you on. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. But like we're supposed to do one on Tuesdays, but the last two weeks I've done them on Wednesdays. So maybe we'll move the dates around. I don't know. But I get to help you another. It's going to be okay. I, yeah, no, it'll be fine. You worry too much. Yeah, but tomorrow I get to help another buddy start a podcast. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. Does, is there anything you talk about now or no? Nah, I don't think so. Not just yet. Okay. All right, well, I look forward to it. But he's got, let's just say he's got a group of people that are with him. Nice. I know, that was very vague. <laughs> yes, it was. That was a presidential <laughs> answer. Yeah, and I'm going to be a consultant pretty much, so that'll be interesting. Yeah. But showing somebody how to do it and kind of helping them. And I've given you pointers, but I haven't like been there physically. To sh hey, no, do this, do that. Right. So it'll be different, but they have some pretty sweet equipment, and that'll be fun to play with. And just starting from the ground up, you know, the sky's the limit. And one thing that I'll tell people if they're starting a podcast and kind of like you've done, you have to be bigger than what you really are. Like when you start out, like when we started out, we were just a couple of dudes, one microphone, but the things that we put together and what people see, this is something that, you know, I learned in radio. I talked to over my radio career, millions and millions of people. I've met maybe thousand, you know, like the people that actually listen to you, you rarely meet. 
So right. your interaction with them is going to come from them going to your website, you know, seeing your picture, you know, maybe they'll drop you an email. Maybe they'll sign up for a shirt. Your interaction with them is so small, you know, for, for the most people that listen, like the most people that most people that have our app has, have never messaged me. Most people that listen to the podcast have never sent me a message. Right. That's just how it goes. You know, people, everybody that signed up for the app and have the app have not signed up for a free shirt. <laughs> I'm kind of glad because that'd be expensive. <laughs> That's a lot of shirts. <laughs> That's a lot of shirts. I really don't have that much money. Like I said, we're trying to save it so that we can spend it and then get it back and then yeah. spend it again to get it back again and then spend it again. But we still don't have enough money because we would spend more because then we get it back and then we could spend more. But anyway, I'm working on it, Adam. I'm working on it, bro. You're just, doing great and it's going to work out, brother. Just I have faith. I don't have resentments. It's just I'm worked up. <laughs> I understand. But no, but you're doing it right. And, you know, for me, like I said, I would tell people, you know, just make it bigger than life. Nobody knows you're in your closet. Not that you're in your closet. I'm just saying if somebody's in their closet doing a podcast, you can make it sound like you're in a closet doing a podcast if you want. I guess you could. But if you throw it out there like, boom, we're bigger than life, that's what people are going to think. They only know what you tell them. Yeah. Like I said, they're hardly ever going to meet you. So yeah, I look like Brad Pitt. I use some other guy's picture because I don't want the, I don't want the, <laughs> the, the trouble of it all. <laughs> the fame. Yeah. Let's use somebody else's picture on the website and stuff, but do what you need to. <laughs> no, but yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun, man. And when's your next podcast coming around Saturday? Ah, uh, yeah, actually we're going to do, we have company coming over and I'm, we're doing a mega podcast. I'm going to have four people on the podcast at once. So it should be interesting. We're going to have a good conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Who's your guest? I'm going to have my friend Jay and he's, he's coming. We'll see. Yeah. He's coming Saturday for sure. And then James is coming as well. My cool. friend James. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. Can I give you something that you have to say? Uh, sure. Midget booty. Midget booty? You have to work that into your podcast somehow. Okay. Okay. And I can't just blurt it out, midget booty? No, you got to work it in like a sentence, baby. You got to work it in all smooth like, and then I will. see if they even react. Okay. And, and it, that one should be a pretty easy one to work in. Yeah. We'll play a little Especially two, with these guys. <laughs> a little 217 game on the Stone Soup Recovery Podcast this Saturday. That, to me, sounds I like fun. It. I love it. It's a crossover. <laughs> yeah, a little cross promotion going on. I like it. A game it. within the game, bro. Game within the game. It's It's genius. Yeah. So, everybody, make sure you tune in. Stone Soup Recovery Podcast, this Saturday especially, listen for Midget Booty. Midget Booty. And if you're the 10th person to email Stone Soup Recovery Podcast, the email's on their website, stonesouprecoverypodcast.com. 10th person to email in, or the first, will get a free 217 Recovery Midget Booty shirt. Ah. And there'll only be one of them. Wow, cool. That's awesome. See, now we're really cross-promoting, bro. Now we're cross-promoting. <laughs> so now you have to let me know. I will. I for sure will let you know. My mom's going to email you. <laughs> I she heard it. Hit me up. She won't even listen. She'll be like, I heard it. <laughs> and you're like, didn't even do it. That's funny. Yeah, you have to mark the time. that that. Yeah, there you go. You have to mark the time that you say it. So when they oh. email you in, they have to have the time in there of when you said midget booty. How far in? How far into the episode I say midget booty? Yep, they have to know that. They have to put it in there, and then they'll get a okay. two seventeen recovery midget booty t shirt. I am so doing it on Saturday. The only one ever going to be made. Collector's item. Collector's item, one of a kind. Tune in. That'll be fun. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'm gonna wrap up this podcast, but I appreciate you stepping on with me. I know you're. Like I said, we're chatting with me earlier, and you know I was having kind of a down day, so yeah, did 
cheer me up to do this podcast with you. So appreciate you much, Adam. Can't wait to listen to Saturday's episode, man. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun, man. And uh, just tune in, brother. Will do. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, Adam. Take care, brother. All right, brother. Peace, man. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. Win a bunch of free shit from 217 Recovery. Go to the app or the website, 217recovery.com.